My name is Mary Cole. I'm an agent at the Andrea Brown Literary Agency, and I write the blog KidLit.com. I'm here to talk about something that I see a lot in my line of work, stereotypical characters. Stereotypes are at play everywhere. I mean, look, there are a lot of stereotypes about agents. No. No. Oh, no. The worst thing that can happen in your writing is cliché. I know it's cliché to say that, and I know that a lot of writing teachers thrive on saying, oh, this is such a cliché phrase, or this is such a cliché image, but the reason that we react to them so strongly is because there's something grating about the familiar. Well, the same thing with character. If you give us a cheerleader and she's bitchy and she's wearing really hot, low-cut things and she's with the jock, well, unless you're setting us up for a surprise later on, we're going to feel like we've already read that book before. We've already seen that character. I'm using a prop today to illustrate how a cliché can become a character. A Rubik's Cube. Now, let's take a cliched character out of the YA canon. Let's say the mathlete. Really smart at school, only cares about their GPA, kind of socially stilted usually, right? Well, this character, how about they don't really like math. Numbers are just something that comes easily to them. It's not really one of the things that they want to do with their life. Now, usually the brain or the nerd or the mathlete character has really strict parents who completely stilt and stifle them. What if this character's parents are hippies and they're really irresponsible and it's this teen's job to basically keep the house together? And what if they just got a scholarship to college, but they're not going to take it because they want to open up a record store in their hometown? And what if they're also dating the bad boy? Now, this is starting to look a little bit more interesting in terms of character, what they want, their secrets, and some of the other things that make them a multifaceted, interesting read. This is a list of what makes any human being, and therefore any character, unique. Their secrets, their wants, their needs, their relationships with other people or characters, their past their hopes for the future, their secret pain, their secret joy, the things they only do when they're in private, the things they only do when they're in public. There are also questions that you need to ask about every single one of your characters as you're writing them, and I really feel like these will help you access some depth, or at least think about your characters in a different way. For example, your character has a box buried at the very bottom of their closet. What do they keep in there? Your character can't sleep. It's late at night and everybody else in the house is wearing sleep masks and earplugs and can't be woken up. In the very, very middle of the night, very privately, what does your character do? As a kid, your character wanted to be X when they grew up, but then Y happened and now they want to be Z. What happened and why did it change their trajectory and why did it change their trajectory to Z? Characters are defined by their relationships to other people and all relationships are complicated. So what is the character's relationship to all the other characters in the story? When is this particular relationship, and you do want to think this through for every relationship, so when is each relationship easy? When is it complicated and what in particular complicates it? A lot of relationships thrive and are complicated and are really interesting to read because characters want different things. So this ties back into, the, into one of the questions that I asked earlier, which is, what does your character want? So what is your character's primary conflict with each of the other characters in the story? How does the conflict change over the course of the story is also a really, really important question to ask.
The best weapon in your arsenal when you're writing a character is surprise. For example, not everything has to be one flavor. Your great characters, your main characters, their sympathetic friends, they shouldn't always be 100% good. They should do something that puts them in a compromising position. They should make a wrong choice. They should do something that makes them human and flawed. The same goes for your bad characters, your villains. Nobody likes a villain that hates babies and kicks puppies and spills kids ice cream all over the street. They're bad. But what's more surprising is to find their secret pain, to find what makes them maybe even a little bit good deep down. That surprise, those wrinkles, that moment when you catch yourself reading and you realize that you're sympathizing with the villain or you're judging a character who was up until this moment completely good and wholesome, that's a great moment that just pulls you deeper and deeper into the story. But keep in mind, your characters must always be in character. When I'm reading, and it feels like I know the character as if they're an actual person, as if they're a friend, I know I found a winning manuscript. But the thing that really, really easily pulls me out of that winning manuscript is once I do know that character, but then they do something that I can't logically motivate in my head. I can't figure out why they're doing what they're doing. I can't puzzle it together. So once you accomplish a goal of making a really lifelike, human-like character that your reader feels like they know intimately, you really have to abide by that trust that you've created with your reader and make sure your character acts consistently. They can reveal a new wrinkle of themselves and do something bad or do something that the reader previously didn't know they had in them but it has to still be under that main umbrella of who they are as a person. So it's a fine line, but an important distinction to make. Your character can surprise the reader, your character can reveal new shades of themselves, but it can't read as false um, compared to what you've already established. So if I have to say one of the things that I love most about reading compelling characters, it's being surprised. It's seeing a new shade of somebody. It's learning about the interior life. Because we all have one. We all have pasts. We all have hopes for the future. We all have secrets and wants and needs. And if you start thinking about your characters in those terms, they become people. Even if a lot of that stuff doesn't make it on the page, they still become more fleshed out, more three-dimensional. And I feel like a lot of those elements really will play into your story, they'll play into the relationships that your characters have with one another, they'll really come across to the reader. But it's your job to do all that thinking work, all that soul searching for yourself and for your characters. But I feel like once you know your character in depth, once you give them a lot of complexity that's under the surface, you will avoid the trap of having stereotypical characters.